Hello and welcome to News Click. Uh, we are with you this evening to talk about the Indian Premier League, the perhaps biggest, glitziest, most talked about, most uh, widely covered cricket tournament that there is on the planet. Uh, we're talking about it, of course, in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, that is currently, well, running rampant. I, I don't want to use sort of flippant terminology in, uh, in describing what is happening on the ground, but I think those of you who are watching us uh, wherever you are are very well aware of what's happening uh, in India at the moment. We're talking about the IPL in the context of sport and a pandemic uh, or in terms of uh, sport in the times of a national crisis, a global cri crisis, such as the one we are dealing with at the moment. Uh, and what we sort of expect from the sport that we watch, that we follow, uh, that we love, that we often spend our time, our money, uh, all of that on and, and focus a lot of attention on people that we idolize. And of course, all the great things about human endeavor that we celebrate uh, when it comes to the sporting field. Joining us for this conversation this evening are uh, journalists Sharda Ugra and Leslie Xavier, as well as Prabir Purkaista, who is the News Click Editor-in-Chief. Thank you very much. Hope you guys are all well. As yet. Hi. Hi, Siddhant, hanging in there. So far, uh, so good. good. Yeah, good to hear that. Sharda, I want to come to you to begin this conversation because you are most closely associated with cricket as a journalist and a writer for, for several years. You are following everything that's going on with the sport, talking to several people. Uh, why are we talking about the IPL in this time when there are clearly uh, other things to talk about, things of life and death and, and other urgencies? Uh, the IPL is just such a large entity in our sort of public space, in our public attention at this point of the year. Every summer for the last 10, 14, now it's 14 season, it, it's broken upon us. And it has been seen, it has been seen with a great amount of pride that, oh, this has been a game changer for, for sport, for cricket, for, in, for, for India's, uh, you know, representation in the world. And uh, they say very proudly that no movie releases during IPL. You know, that's how big it is. And because it's such a big business and because it's it, it sort of become this uh, sort of semi-entertainment package that is made for TV and for fans and you know, into the stadium, that uh, it occupies uh, our uh, public attention en masse, you know, across the, across the sort of scale. Uh, but at a time like this, when it's happening, all the contradictions are then just coming and it's like they're coming in, like, to me, it's like they're spitting in your face, you know, you're spitting in the country's face when this is going on. I know it sounds very extreme, but because of all the stuff that's happening around us, it just, something in it just looks really, really out of sync. And like I keep saying, I've said a lot, it's almost like it's deaf. It's not listening to what's happening in the country. Right. So, so in general, what I, I guess... Uh, why we're talking about this is because there seems to be no acknowledgement of uh, the the realities that common Indian people are facing. Uh, while this tournament is progressing or being conducted in what is called a biosecure bubble, uh, which means that those who are participating in this tournament are sort of protected. They are removed from common society, from from uh, you know contact with normal people. Uh, they have dedicated medical care. They have regular RT-PCR and other testing for COVID-19. Uh, and basically, a, a sort of sub-environment has been created in which uh, these players, officials, ground staff, broadcasters, commentators, etc., uh, live and kind of work so that they are safe and they are able to do the jobs that they are uh, sort of are tasked with doing. Uh, so, Leslie, if you can maybe just give us an outline of what this bio bubble means and, and why exactly, because sport has been happening around the world, whether it's the Premier League or the Champions League or uh, the NBA happened in the US, all these things happen in bubbles. Why are we kind of questioning or criticizing the IPL's method of functioning or, uh, you know, yeah, reason to exist at this point? Uh, to start with, it's 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 the logistics that has been diverted to make this bubble happen. So, 
uh, to start with, let's talk about the RTPCR that you mentioned. So the players and the officials and uh, the team officials, the, the relatives of players who are in the bubble, and the ground staff, the umpires, uh, the television crew, everybody who was involved in this, they all go through RTPCR every second day. And the results are real time. It comes within seven to eight hours max or much earlier than that. And, uh, and then just let's just step out from the bubble and see what's happening in Delhi. We have people who are waiting for a test to be done. They have to wait for four days for the slot to arrive and then wait four more days. By the time either their cases, their disease would have escalated to a point of no return or they, they, have, they would have started recovering. And they need this test result for uh, we ourselves have experienced that trying to get uh, our uh, people we know into, into hospitals. That the result is important for them to get admission into the hospital. So that is the reality that's happening outside. And here you are just going about RT-PCR as though it's nothing. Every every other day you're getting tested. So that 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 playing out of this 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 irony, this disconnect is is it's what the biggest bother is. And you have personnel like, for instance, dedicated uh, central police force force personnel giving security and ensuring that the bubble is intact. You have uh, made arrangements for logis logistical arrangements for transfer of the entire bubble from one city, a city like Bombay, where the escalation is, 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 has been there for the last eight to nine months. It's been continuous, the city has been reeling, to a city like Delhi, which is burst uh, on its seams, uh, and too much of pain and horror stories coming out from, from the streets. And literally from the streets, uh, people are dying on the streets. So uh, you're bringing the entire bandwagon here, setting up airport logistics, everything. So we are diverting personnel and that to government forces who can be of use, but better use to help uh, alleviate issues that are happening on the field and with relation to the pandemic. And you're using it to set up this, 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 this silly roadshow. And where is this also happening? It's happening in Kotla from tomorrow. Rosha Kotla. Now it's called Arun Jaitley Stadium. And it's, it's right across where is the LNGB, LNJB hospital, which is every now and then you, you see messages from them saying that we are running out of oxygen. Patients are lined up outside to get, get one bed. And again, there is a cremation ground a couple of kilometers away where people are standing in queues to, to get their skin cremated. So how will you play the cricket game in such a scenario? No matter how much of a sanitized bubble you are creating, uh, you're just, you're playing when outside people are dying. So that's, that's the situation we are looking at. So that's, that's the problem which is, which never surfaced in any of the bubbles that you mentioned. So football has been happening across Europe, NBA happened, US Open. So uh, these things happened and would these things have... Uh, you remember NBA players had, had, had stood up and said that they wouldn't play. And so what are our cricketers doing? I mean, I'm not saying that they should stand up and say that they, they, uh, they can't play, but uh, they should probably voice their opinion saying that this is something that's not right. And foreigners have started doing that, by the way. Foreign players who are involved in the in this mix. While Indians have Indians have been silent. So the whole approach of the cricket fraternity, Indian cricket fraternity, plus the plus the situation where which you're playing a game and outside something else is happening. All this is 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 it is that's the problem. That's that's the that's what we are uh, voicing our angst again. Uh, Prabir, as someone who follows sport, uh, I think quite closely, uh, what is uh, sort of there? Uh, I mean, what, what do we expect from the IPL? Because in our conversations with people who are following the sport and those who want it to continue, the most common refrain seems to be they are, they, there's something being provided almost in uh, like service terms. 
that this is national scale or global scale distraction from the very, very harsh realities that all of us are going through in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, what do you make of the distraction argument and, and how would you sort of, uh, let's say we would put you in that uh, job of the uh, BCCI boss. How, how would you sort of uh, maybe voice your reasoning behind holding this tournament, behind continuing to play cricket? Or what, 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 what are the sort of steps that you might take? I, I don't really want to be even speaking as if I'm the BCCI boss. I think that's not a spot you should put me on ever. No, let, let's, let's just recognize what cricket for us means. We started as people who played when we were young. Of course, everybody plays some gully cricket to cricket proper, whatever you call it, as you used to call it, the deuce ball. We loved it like any other game we, because we played in it. That's how the bond with the sports is. What we see today is not the sports that we, or the game that we started with. It's really a vast entertainment industry we are talking about. And therefore, a person who plays one season of IPL makes perhaps enough money to last him perhaps, you know, at least for 10 seasons for him and his family. So these are the economics of for the players also that is there and also as all entertainment, cricket increasingly has become from the sport it used to be to essentially something which is more of an entertainment, 50 overs and 20 overs. We even see talk about 10 overs. So it's clearly the entertainment and the immediate, rest, you know, uh, what shall we say, uh, instant gratification has become the key to this so-called IPL as, a, as what people are watching. I accept the fact that people want entertainment, even in hard times, even in uh, times of cholera, uh, you want entertainment, people are dying, what do you do? But you know, there is a heartlessness about it, that people are lining up in front of hospitals, they're lying there, they're dying. And inside the bio, bio bubble is one issue, inside the larger entertainment bubble, but you watch IPL, there's not even a sensitivity to what is happening that's so disheartening. You know, I do not, at the moment, I'm not going to uh, disagree with what other uh, panel members have already said. And I think they've said it very powerfully. But what hurts me the most is all those who are participating from commentators to the players, and of course, to the big bosses, there is not even a semblance of making at least even a symbolic gesture to say, this is happening, this is tragic. Yes, we are doing this, but a heart is the people who are suffering. And yes, we are providing entertainment to the people. What is it that we can do in the hard times? But we would like to make symbolic gestures, raise some money, give you know a part of our uh, cash that we are going to give, get, let the sponsors give some money. So make some symbolic gestures. I know that is not going to solve the problem, okay? But at least do that. But let the BCCI bosses who make a huge killing from the television uh, money that uh, they get, at least say 20% of our take we will give for COVID-19 relief of some kind or the other. So can we even symbolically see these gestures just to make it at least more palatable that in times which are so hard, so heartbreaking for the people, at least there is a sense that we are living in the same world. Otherwise, it seems from the players to commentators, of course, we don't see the people who are maintaining the bubble. They are not in the bubble. They're just, they're probably maintaining the bubble at a much higher cost to themselves. They don't get the money that the players, the commentators get. But all of that taken into account, you know, what is really the callousness of it is day after day, day after day, you go on seeing it. And it seems that it's in a different uh, planet altogether. It's not here. And it's happening right in the cities, which are hardest hit. Mumbai, Delhi, you know, these are the cities which are uh, really very hard hit. It was Mumbai earlier. And now it's Delhi, and Delhi is uh, as I, mean, I, I don't want to 
talk about what condition Delhi is in. We are literally uh, living breath to breath. And if anybody falls ill today and becomes serious, we just don't know, in spite of all the pulls and the uh, connections people have, even then they might, nobody's going to empty a bed for them. So, and there are no beds. And even if there are beds, even there is, you know, bed even in a intensive care unit, oxygen is in short supply. What do you say? So under such conditions, when the city is gasping, when the patients are dying, when the country is in shambles at the moment, at least a symbolic gesture would have softened the blow of trying to maintain the game. And because, as you say, okay, people need entertainment. So therefore, I'm saying, even if we accept that argument, as you said, amongst a certain section, they still want to have the escapist fare that IPL provides, at least that should have been enough. And I see that even that minimal, uh, I have to call this decency on public life, because if you're in BCCI, you're in public life. You're not just talking about cricket and a private venture, though you run it like a private venture, but that, that apart, but you are still in public life. And that I think for all sportsmen, sportswomen, it's clear they are a sports persons, they are in public life and they owe it to their public to make this even symbolic gestures, which we just don't see. And it's tragic that foreign players are starting to talk about it because they have already seen what other sports have done at least. And they have all talked about it, participated in it. And here we just, we are living in a make-believe world that it doesn't touch them. And that I think is a part of what we have, that the Indian elite always is believed it's separate from the rest. And I think when you have a bubble, it sort of accentuates that feeling that you don't are really not a part of this country. You're separate. You are somewhere, somewhere in a stratified superior place. I'm sorry, I sound like I'm ranting, but it is heartbreaking to register what Sharda and Leslie have said. And there is no way you can say anything else. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think uh, the reason we're having this conversation is also because uh, the, that kind of, uh, the, the sort of superficial chatter about uh, how these bubbles are important and why and all of that has, has to be maybe put into sharper perspective. And, and so, yeah, they're, I think, valuable uh, points of view from someone who is both a fan of the sport as well as a commentator on how things are going whether it's from, from the healthcare perspective or in terms of the wider structure that, that we have in this country today. Uh, Sharda, because, you know, your piece was also a, a very sort of personal emotive uh, piece uh, and you have been, this is a fraternity that you're very much a part of and have been for a long time and perhaps that's why it, it is so close to uh, home, you know. Uh, in that sense, wh what would you ask for? What, what are you asking for? What are you asking the powers that are controlling the BCCI to do, actually? I mean, uh, so when that piece was written, it's almost like you got all your anger out onto it, you know, you just, because I have been sitting on this piece for days and saying, just, it has to get published. This is just too much. And uh, uh, I don't know whether uh, whether Leslie or Prabir or whether you have noticed uh, that I watch a segment in it, uh, I watch the IPL through dugout, select dugout, which they have players sitting and talking about it. And it's got, it's supposed to be slightly more elevatedly and complex sort of level of commentary. And it's not just shouting. They have a segment in it that used to be called death by numbers. And I was just watching it and saying, now, come on, you know, what is this? Have you no idea what has happened? And I think the message has gone out to people in that, in that bubble to say, listen, just take it down. Just take down the title, turn it into something else. You know, so these are the basic steps if you have to even look at and you're saying, is no one listening? Is no one hearing it? What is it? Um, what would you want them to do? Like Prabir is saying, any gesture or uh, showing sympathy with it. But I think what has happened now is that we have gone, I mean, I, I don't think they, they're not, they couldn't win me over in any way at all. As a, as a cricket fan, and as a cricket uh, journalist, and I consider myself a cricket person, you know, there are millions and millions of cricket persons and we are cricket persons. As a cricket person, uh, they've lost me already. Forget it. Um, yeah, because I'm thinking 10 years from now, someone is going to say they actually 
a cricket tournament when there were funeral pyres uh, burning three and a half kilometers away from the Firosha Kotla and the hospitals didn't have oxygen. They actually played cricket. How does it reflect on your sport? You know, what is that sport? What does it look like? Has everyone lost their, their, their sense in the way it is going? We understand everything else about, again, I'm going to be now in some ranting mode, so I shall just dial down a little bit and say, what you want them to say is, okay, forget about my what I think or whatever, is just connect with the outside audience that there is. All these eight franchises that are there, the cities in which they are taking place, respond to them at, in an active way. Don't give everything to PM cares. It's a black hole. We'll never know where it goes. Give it where you can see it. Give it directly where it's happened. At least go and talk to people who have come out through COVID. You know, I mean, uh, 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 one of India's international uh, players on the international women's team, she has lost her mother. How is she going to be feeling watching this nonsense buck buck going on with shouting and screaming and everything every day and say, no, we are entertained. She has lost her mom. You know, so there is, uh, uh, so literally just reach out to people in a way that doesn't have to be, um, you, you're not doing them a favor. It's not a handout. You are just bowing and you are just sharing their sorrow with them in some way. Just do it in a way that it shows. The franchises should do it. Would not football clubs in England have done something of this sort? You know, have, didn't I know Manchester United did a lot. I remember during the COVID thing, the football clubs were huge. Yeah, the, I think uh, the English Premier League, the German League uh, were some of the first to begin resume competition after the first uh, wave hit. Yes, I, uh, in England at least there was an understanding that this testing to ensure that this some kind of bio bubble is maintained. Uh, a private company was contacted to test all of the players, officials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, involved, and the understanding was that you will conduct X number of tests paid tests, which the Premier League is paying for, right, for our players and our staff. But you will only be given this contract on the understanding that uh, an equal number of tests you will do for free for the National Health Service. There you are. Right. There you absolutely are. Very simple you know? thing to do. That, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, Siddharth, the other part that is important here, I think, to talk about is that you talk them as franchises of the city. But they're not franchises. Exactly. They're really franchises of the owners who have branded it yeah. from the city so that they get the a quote unquote captive fan base, supposedly, of the city. These are not clubs which have come up organically. When you talk about football, yeah, yeah. those are clubs which have come up organically. And the, the, the club actually has a deep bond with the uh, fans. And that's what we saw when the Super League was scuppered. scuppered. So, you know, that is also the other problem with the IPL. These are not, uh, these have all been so, parachuted into the cricket sporting arena and they so, have been done from the top. So, Prabhi, uh, the, the whole premise of uh, IPL was it, it's based on the American sport model of these franchises created by these owners coming in and doing it. And Lalit Modi used to say this confidently. Uh, I would be very interested in finding out what he thinks the way the IPL has handled the situation. Because... Whatever he was, he was very aware of optics. He was very aware of image. So I don't know what his, his response to this, which says, me, oh, I better try and reach him and get a story. But his response to this, I'm wondering what it would have been. You know, um, I'm thinking about it now. But in terms of this, so at least have the franchises respond to the cities in every way. All these cities have very, very good first class teams. So do something for the players in that community as well. Okay, you don't want to do it, it's a business. So literally show that you are not just a, uh, a money generating machine or an entertainment generating device, you know, on our, on our remote, on our remote uh, in that sense. So um, it, 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 when you're watching this and you're saying, what is this going to look like uh, 10 years from now? And you can just think that, I mean, the, Leslie wrote those lines about the crematorium and the floodlights coming on and I'll never be able to forget them. It is just stuck in my head now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there. I mean, yeah. It's it's a. I'm I'm glad that he managed to get those words out. It's it's a difficult one to sort of uh, digest for 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 many of us. Um, I I had a question somewhere there, but like in in I think your emotion, I have also gotten a bit lost. So what I <laughs> but but, but come back. 
no so uh, what i was going to say was uh, last evening i did a uh, small uh, not not a well a, an instagram poll now any pollsters that may may or may not be watching this is not not a scientifically conducted poll uh, so please don't jump down our throats for that a, a very sort of basic just a yes or no kind of poll um, i think the the sample size in the end was a few hundred and a lot of the responses that uh, i got from those who were saying yes the ipl must continue and i again i also want to point out that at no point are any of us i think saying that this tournament should be cancelled or called off or scrapped or any of that uh, but maybe conducted with a bit more sensitivity maybe take a pause if if that is what uh, the situation on the ground demands uh, but so those who are in favor of it continuing a lot of them argued that there are people who have been jobless for a long time and because of the ipl they are finding work there are some who run sort of companies based on this who employ several people so there are jobs at stake uh, how would you respond to the jobs argument in this context uh, and again is it something that can't be sort of paused for a while because uh, as we say of course while things are continuing as normal everything is happening shops are open restaurants are open people are going to bars and and uh, uh, cinema halls and all that then that's a different context today you are more and more seeing a lockdown everywhere basic economic activity has been curtailed to whatever extent uh, you know it's deemed not absolutely essential so in that context how does the job argument fit in who's the question to Anyone, who are you asking us whoever, whoever wants to take yeah. it Sarda, please, you started. Uh, no, the jobs, the jobs argument is a fair argument. I'm saying, uh, you know, it's fine. The jobs can, you need to have jobs, but let us also look at the fact that uh, the IPL should have been paying attention to when the spike was kind of, uh, when the when the surge was sort of beginning. It was, you know, why is it pretending like it's the government and it has not paid attention to anything? Which sounds ridiculous, but you know what I mean. so why uh, it, when they see something like this is happen they actually have two standby venues it's not that it's uh, indoor this indoor and hyderabad it's not that they any better in that sense but if you have to move it maybe you should have thought about moving it earlier maybe you should have rejigged it that you can move it into other places i don't know i'm not into the logistics of it i don't understand how it works but to find yourself in this position is that after some time you said how many you know how would all those people who are working also what would they feel when they know they are going into this kind of environment you have to just deaden your senses i assume and and kind of get into it so i am not saying you cancel the ipl i am not saying i'm just find a way to make it work so that you don't have uh, uh, like you think with sensitivity and with some kind of response and also accepting that you have taken away all these resources i actually thought there was just one ambulance uh, in every ground and therefore it's all fine then i realized about the tests that happened then i realized that these tests have to happen every two days and then you keep building up and these are a thousand people that are being thousand 1200 people that are being tested every day and you're thinking you know the thousand 1200 people must be outside uh, could have done with tests you know so what is more important at this point in time is it tests for people on the outside or tests for people in the bubble that is a very easy answer you know uh, so my my response is only that you need to be a little bit more nimble when it was thinking about how you are going to stage this event maybe you should have staged it in the uae like you had done last time in that sense just move it away from here because it's you are not getting the crowds in any way thankfully um the everyone says that when they had pulled in about i think 60000 people into the ahmedabad stadium for a t20 match they were all sitting in the same place and that also became like a little super spreader kind of event that happened maybe think about moving it to the uae you could have moved it quickly enough hold it outside you know it's not that uh, um, uh, you it, it, it's not that it's not possible it's not that it can't be done this is the bcci this is where the they have di- they have the direct line to the government the government and the bcci talk across the dinner table i'm assuming so yeah, it's no. not a Siddhant, Siddhant, I'm going to give a sharper answer. You know, this was the argument given against a lockdown as well. How many people will lose jobs? And yes, they did. Migrant workers, we call them migrants. They're really people who have come to the city to work. So they are not migrant in the sense that they go back and forth every six months. 
So we took a huge economic hit and the poor sections, poorer sections have taken a much bigger hit during the pandemic than you and I have taken. Maybe. So let's be very clear that this has had, this has set back poverty, inequality, back gender equality, back 10 years. So we have all taken that hit. Then to talk about a few thousand employment seems, you know, really an excuse. I can't say anything else. And, you know, this was the argument Trump gave when he said, what can we do? We can't lock down because this is really going to affect the American economy. So that is not the way to treat a pandemic. We are talking of pandemic, and this is qualitatively a different issue than talking about, you know, job losses against losses of lives. So I don't think that argument should be even thought of as an answer. You know, is it either or people have to lose jobs and so on. Hey, take some money of the BCCI's fat money check that they get from all of this. And just a fraction of that will, you know, completely help with the job losses. So let's not even talk about the yearly money that BCCI makes out of IPL. And then, you know, and that's what is all supposedly for greater good of cricket. Let's, let's talk about those things. Uh, I think this is just an excuse for you want to watch IPL, I understand that. You want some escape in the evening from all the dreadful news we are hearing, escapism, IPL. I understand that psyche, but let's not justify or rationalize in this particular way. Uh, Prabir has uh, just uh, hit us all out of the park with that one. Uh, so there's the, like no the the the, uh, the uh, employment argument has just been taken and thrown back in our faces. What he's saying is absolutely right about the amount of money that the BCCI have. They could actually have pay. They can actually pay every single one of the 1100, 1200 people that are there. They can actually pay them their fees and say, okay, pack your bags and go home. We don't need you anymore. They have that much money. They are that rich. Yeah, as as in hey, also. So sorry, let's go on. No, also uh, to add to what probably uh, another aspect is that BCCI doesn't have a moral standing to talk about job security or job losses because if that was the case, then why hold the IPL in the UAE where where all your ground where none of your groundsmen or the basic lower level employees who maintain this bubble or maintain uh, ensure that a match happens on a ground or a tournament happens. They were all not involved. They were all jobless at that point. And you conducted that tournament in the UAE happily. You made your money. You made your broadcast money. Paid the money to the Arabs for staging, using their stadiums and their facilities and came back. So uh, they don't have a standing now to say that we are doing it for the employment sake because this was never about IPL 2020 and now IPL 2021 or any of the IPLs has never been about, about people and jobs and job security and the cricket ecosystem. And getting back to what Shada said about franchises and their responsibility to cricketers at the local level. Again, IPL doesn't have a grassroots program. IPL eats into the BCCA grassroots, grassroots, grassroots program, the franchises. That's why the auction happened. It's, 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 it's glorified slave trade and in a way. They, they don't care about what happens, happens at the ground level in the city that they're based. So, Getting back to the employment employment thing of it, so that's that's uh, so when when people say that it's for the eco sporting economy as such, sports economy as such, again it's it's cricket we are talking about. It's it's not it's not the general sporting idea that India represents, which is which is uh, which comprises of many many rural sports, many grassroots sports, uh, and they all continue to struggle, and they will all continue to thrive also because they are they all feed into into the local psyche, local network, and uh, the local culture. Cricket, IPL, with what they're doing now, will will be disconnected from that culture. And over time, and I'm hoping also sincerely, because uh, over time, I just hope that the IPL becomes irrelevant. I had written this as well. So yeah, but well, I mean, we'll we'll have to uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm uh, since Sharda brought up Lalit Modi a while ago. I had. Uh, several long conversations with uh, Lalit Modi while he was still speaking with me, uh, and and one of the things that he would no doubt bring you should up, try again. I will definitely. <laughs> but, but one of the things that he I think would bring up in this uh, scenario is, uh, 
that because of the amount of wealth generated by the IPL, uh, the BCCI has been able to dish out funds to its affiliates, all the state organizations, and then so on to the district level, et cetera, et cetera, to be able to sort of initiate some things like pensions and, you know, pro proper salaries, you know, ground staff, some now get pensions, uh, people like that, day-to-day -day employees, work, working class people who are employed by cricket. Uh, he would no doubt bring that up. And, and you know, the, those little bit of uh, sort of trickle down economics ideas that are always touted as, as the successes of these mega events. Uh, Prabir, I know you have to go. If you can give us maybe parting comments on what you make of, of this, the, the whole idea of this. Uh, of course, Leslie touched on it in terms of how things can be from the grassroots up rather than uh, this trickle-down, top-down approach that we're talking about. Because like, like someone was saying, for example, again, this is very conversational, but uh, Hindustan mein garib log hain, bhuke log hain, but hum sab tab bhi restaurant mein jaake khana khate hain. To ab IPL ke aap uh, uspe bandook kyun taane hoon hain. Ye, this is, this, this is the line of thinking. And if you can just leave me with a quick, your thoughts on, on how you would sort of rebut this. I think we need a separate discussion. I don't think we should tag it on to this discussion, but since you've raised it, I'm not going to duck the question. I think when you look at sports as entertainment, the question is, we cannot get away from the fact that sports has become entertainment. It is intrinsically connected to television. And the television's mainstay today is really sports. It's not news, it's not cinema, it's not uh, entertainment or other kinds. It's really sports which drives television. Everything else is going to go to the over what's called the OTT platforms. So given that, 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 that is there. We also have to see structurally what happens to sports itself. And then the issue really is that if super clubs, super events become the dominant money makers, then you are going to get really centralization on a scale, which means the hinterland of sports will then slowly dry out. And that is the uh, basic problem that is there when you have start seeing big monopolies. And what you are seeing in terms of sports clubs and fr IPL franchises, what you are seeing is the growth of monopoly in sports, that sports is now represented by eight franchisee clubs. That's cricket. If, if the Super League happens in football by 16 clubs or 20, now that then becomes Super League, that becomes a sports. So I think that structurally for sports, is a completely different path. They have, I, I know that there's this American model versus the traditional model, as I would call it, where the fans to clubs, the relationship is there. We, we come from the East Bengal, Mohan Bagan football Calca, uh, culture in Calcutta. So we're really part of that. Now, I don't think I like this, this kind of model that is being preached which is a super capitalist model and which is really based on monopoly and big money should go to few people as the basis of it, that everybody wants to get into the gladiator uh, mode and then try and make, break it into that. That becomes the driving force. Of course, there is quote unquote trickle down effect, but the trickle up effect is far more dominant that trickle down effect. And I believe that's the complete disaster for larger the sports uh, model itself. And I, I'm not talking about IPL here. I'm really talking about what it means to all sports and what it means therefore to the larger relationship between sports fans and the clubs or the players. I'm sorry, this is a digression from- the, I, I don't think so at all. In I fact, it's, it's a very good point. Yes. Uh, that you are leaving us on because we can continue uh, this conversation for a little while with Sharda and Leslie about actually some of these things that you've mentioned, including what is this kind of false sense that there's a market for the services that these athletes are providing. And, and in fact, what, what is actually happening to them and why rich and powerful athletes who have, in some cases, uh, sort of social media followings of uh, 20, 30 million people, are still finding themselves in a position where they are unable to uh, commiserate, empathize, or even voice solidarity with uh, the people that uh, on whom their entire adulation 
and their position is based. So, so, so I don't think it was a digression at all. To be go on. I'm going to leave my apologies to the fellow panelists for leaving like this, but I really have to go for something else. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank really you, <laughs> for listening to me and letting me go. Thank you. Thank you, Prabir. We'll we'll carry on for, Thank you. for a minute. So just just based on what Prabir, uh, where Prabir left us, Sharda, Leslie. Um, uh, I mean, I don't want to single out any players or whatever, but but some of these big names, let's say the Grade A cricketers, uh, you know, who have just recently been uh, the the new central contracts were announced. I think a couple of weeks ago, there are three of them in the A plus category, and then several others in various categories. All of whom are earning uh, multiple crore rupees just through this one central contract annually, uh, and yet we find this sort of absolute silence uh, from all of them because of what? Uh, I don't yeah, know. It's, it's the central contracts. So there, there are clauses possibly and also that you don't go against what the what the, the organization you want. Uh, okay. and Fair enough. But do but you think a Rohit Sharma or a Virat Kohli or a Jaspeet Bumrah can be so easily replaced? Do you think they lack complete like power in this equation, they have nothing every, every, to negotiate or that, balance? In that regard, everybody is replaceable, I guess. If the police sits, sits on the dock for two, two years, that's it, his career is done, right? And yeah, no, you, we will talk about it if, at some point, but BCPI would ultimately prevail. No, that's uh, when, uh, but what Prabhu said about sport as an entertainment is something that the players also, the superstars should should be worried about. So if I am Virat Kohli and I'm playing the IPL or I'm leading the Indian cricket team, and uh, uh, as much as I mean, even as a journalist, I I would feel the same that if if my chosen beat sports because I've chosen it for so many different reasons. I grew up in sport. I love sport. I I understand the value of sport in a in a larger sense, and if if that is trivialized as a uh, as an entertainment as a digression, when we believe ourselves that it is life, and it is an important aspect that that we do, uh, then they should be they should be worried themselves. They should be ashamed of what they're doing in a way because uh, you are you are playing and. Playing as a digression, how would you feel? How would you feel? What 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 will your motivation be then? Because we have spoken to a lot of athletes over the course of our, of our careers, and we have spoken about their motivation for playing for the country, for for uh, winning, for winning the World Cup, for uh, fighting through pain and winning, uh, and. What is your motivation while playing this IPL? So that is a, that is the point. Because knowing all too all also well that the justification is is is, is entertainment is a digression. So uh, that is one aspect. So starting with voicing their opinion, they should also fight this this sort of branding that is again market driven because sport as an entertainment is 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 something that is pretty recent. Because when we fell in love with sport as as kids, we never knew sport as 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 entertainment. We always sport was participatory. Sport was something that we indulged in. Sport was something that we were a part of, as spectators, as uh, as players at our own small level, be it gully cricket, be it playing football in the local ground, or be it, be it just playing volleyball or whatever sport that you are playing. It has always been that, and also we we look at sport sport in a in a in a in a way we where we don't look at sports persons or our heroes as someone who is who is out there on the screen and who or out there in the in the ground and who is in a bubble. In that, uh, I'm not talking about the eco bio bubble as such, but in a bubble set by the sporting establishment as such. You always identify with them as. Uh, as as one of you, that's that's what that's what made made us all sports fans. And so, on a larger sense, uh, the problem is is it comes from 
this idea that has been created of sport, which is purely business driven. And that's, that's, a, that's a reality. You know, so fair enough. I, I, I take your point. Sharda, um, there are smaller leagues happening in the country. Um, again, private leagues in, a, let's say, football, for example. Uh, also, where the ownership of these franchises, the Indian Super League, for example, is very similar in that it doesn't come from these traditional clubs, etc., etc., except now that East Bengal and Mohan Bagan have joined that bandwagon, that's a separate story. But for the rest, they are all franchises. Uh, they also started from scratch six or seven years ago and are now trying to build a community. <laughs> Several of these clubs across cities have come out and, and again, it's perhaps purely symbolic. It doesn't change anything, it doesn't help anything, maybe really. Uh, it might do. Uh, to say that, you know, these are the platforms we have. You are our community. Uh, you are the people we engage with. And we want to open up our platforms for you to kind of use to whether it's to amplify something that is required or whatever conversation that needs to be had beyond just the playing field. So if this is possible in an environment where largely ownership is the same, same people are controlling how things are done, where the money is much less and therefore the supposed impact of uh, doing or not doing is that much less if that's how things are being measured. How are they able to, to take these steps and, and, and be empathetic at this time while cricket is sadly not? I think the, the very important sort of difference in football and in uh, uh, cricket uh, particularly is that is the fact that because cricket is such a big and a rich thing, uh, there is more power attached to being associated with it, right? And what you're seeing now particularly is the fact that Jay Shah is the secretary of the BCCI, whose father is the home minister of the BCCI. A lot of what is formal government policy is being reflected in the IPL's response to what is happening. Which is how, which is why I was wondering what would have been there had had Lalit Modi been in charge. What would the response have been? So this is now seen as it's taken over. It's a the, the IPL has also become, without realizing it or understanding that okay, this is the way it is, um, uh, become the uh, uh, the official political reflects the official political policy of the of uh, the government in power at the time, which. Uh, you have to wonder, suppose it had been a war or something like that. It's a completely different equation, you know, for, for it to reflect uh, a political policy, a contemporary political policy. If there's a war on, it's completely different. But because there is just so much of death and there's so much of trauma that is happening around it, that's why our response to it is also that much. And you would have wanted, at least for the players, to uh, uh, to step in in their own way and say but either it is fear or it is... Uh, so you, you've got players like Wasim Jafar and uh, Harbhajan Singh and who's playing in the IPL. Wasim Jafar, is, he's a coach in, uh, in, he's a, with a support staff. R. Ashwin has done a little bit. So you have to have a certain... And Irfan Patan, you have to have a certain confidence to be able to do that. Or to say that, ab dekha jayega type of a response. And you're, then you're wondering, is that why is it not happening elsewhere? Um, I mean, uh, we are expecting the players to respond in a way, but uh, I mean, I'm not trying and trying to be extra understanding of what the players are doing. I'm saying what kind of who is talking to them, who is giving them advice? Is the advice coming to them uh, from the franchise owners? Is the advice coming to them from their managers to keep quiet and not see anything? It's almost like uh, the top players in the country don't understand the depth and range of their influence. Um, Suppose, say, for example, Rohit Sharma puts out some tweet, just saying, that's it, my DM is open, let's do this, tells his social media team, let's go crazy with whatever happens, let's try and help as many people as we can, connect them to something or the other. What is the worst that would happen to him? He would never play for India again. But then he becomes a free agent, he can go and play T20 cricket everywhere he wants. And he then becomes a figure of defiance. You know, he becomes a figure of uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, thing. And, I mean, or like yeah, a, I, a I, voice of representing what maybe millions of people are thinking and feeling. Yes, yes, which is a huge thing, and it's almost that uh, uh, that kind of thing will last longer than what your career was. Which is what I don't think that the players understand. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Why are people looking? at, uh, at uh, Wasim Jafar uh, with such interest in that sense or even Harbhajan 
uh, is doing whatever the little work that he's doing. Why are they uh, and why are they calling out the big names? Why are they tra- calling out Tendulkar? Why are they calling out you know Anil Kumble? Whoever, whatever. I'm not saying because they want them to 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 be their heroes. They want them to do that. Um, so it's almost like that the consequences. They are so fearful of the consequences. They don't understand that the, it could actually work in their favor. That it could actually turn them into other kind of uh, uh, other kind of. I mean, look at Abhinav Bindra uh, at what he was able to do. You know, just in that one piece that he put out, he's always spoken against authority and official them. And okay, he's not as po- popular as the big uh, as the most popular cricket player, but you know that he's not afraid of speaking his mind. You know that uh, someone like him will not count out to anyone trying to dictate that. Please, you paste this into your Twitter feed. He will not take that shit at all. You know, so and that will last longer, as long or be as significant and as uh, as as important as your as your career was. And it's possible for you to do that. Someone like Tendulkar, for example, with the smallest thing, it doesn't have to be anything huge. It has to just be the smallest thing that you say to say, okay, I am. Away from this, I am. I am something else, and he himself was ill. You know, he himself came through the illness himself, and you know, he understands what it's about and everything. Yeah. So it's it's that it's almost like they don't understand, and I get the feeling. I mean, I'm just saying this. Maybe it's maybe it's I'm just being a bit too uh, idealistic. Is that once you do it, then you set yourself free, and once you set yourself free. Um, Anything then, and people will follow. People will respect you much more than 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 they do than they did or loved you at the time. Yeah, it's just one thing that they need to do. Yeah, I mean, it seems like uh, the way you're sort of breaking it down. It seems like a fairly win-win situation. And also, I think uh, maybe uh, when you're saying who is talking to these players and stuff like that, uh, the understanding that if you do speak out, at least in favor of the people or your you know your compatriots your fellow human beings uh, when wrong is done to you then those same people will also back you up and I, yeah. i'm not, i'm i'm really unsure how these these guys uh, who have built their platform based on the adulation and 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 the wealth yes. from this adulation as a direct consequence there's no indirect relationship between your twitter followers and your instagram followers and And the amount of money you make it. it's fairly straightforward. Uh, so, why why these guys uh, still don't feel like that that has to that or that can be a mutual relationship? Why does it have to be only a one uh, single direction sort of engagement? Uh, I I don't know how much more we want to continue on the subject because the three of us can definitely carry on for another three hours. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but i'm i'm sure uh, uh, you know one more thing i did want and what i i keep saying this ha uh, sidha what i keep saying always is that more than any other sport i think football players have the most agency in any in, in uh, than any other athlete in the country which is and the point is that they use it well you know they know how to use it and they use it well and everyone say are they are too small and whatever we don't you know nobody knows them as boss at least they use it at least they stand up for something you know So it's like you know that if you if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for everything. So it's that's what's happened with the cricket players. They don't stand for anything, so they fall for everything. Whatever people tell them to do, they do. You know, whatever the power tells them to do, they do. It's yeah. Uh, as, a, yeah. as a small example, like we were, I was also in a bio bubble at one point uh, for the I League, uh, which is you know used to be the National Football League uh, till recently, uh, the top tier that is. and that was conducted in calcutta in again a same biosecure bubble but it was at a time when sort of it was <laughs> the situation was completely flipped where the outside world was carrying on as though uh, the <laughs> pandemic you know corona virus uh, had not happened and everyone was out <laughs> whatever they wanted whereas these group of 2 300 500 300 people were in this very strict quarantine where they we we could not even go uh, to each other's rooms to have a conversation forget about anything else you know so it was completely flipped around and and this was being done from the point of view of looking at how sport can across the board for women for at grassroots level you know at age group level uh, these tournaments were held as a kind of a template maybe a test for larger events or more events to follow in the same manner 
uh, and even then uh, these football players who you say have a little bit more agency because at that time the 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 farmers protest movement was gathering steam uh, many of them come many of the, us come from farming stock many of uh, many players are from punjab uh, so you know they took whatever little small platform they have and they were conscious of what's going on outside their bubble even though most people were getting frustrated by being in it in the first place and they voiced their concern their solidarity for the people their families or and the tens of thousands of nameless people that they don't know personally but are still struggling for something uh let's see how do you i just want to close now man uh, i think i'm sure you have some stuff to add sorry i've taken more time than i should have uh but what is the perspective from other sports you are looking at uh perhaps covering the tokyo olympics whenever those happen uh what what is the perspective from other sports how are other athletes looking at it and and you know what sort of what is the opinion in the sporting fraternity at large about what is happening in cricket and and not happening i think generally the thing is that if the if the athletes who have been who have spoken to ranging from athletics guys to footballers and uh, uh, so they all, all have uh, some kind of stake in 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 the from uh, in that sense uh, uh, someone like kt irfan for instance race walker he he was pretty much involved uh, i'm sure even now but i spoke to him at early part of the pandemic last year and uh, he was directly involved in measures uh, helping people helping the old couples to um, old people who are there or people who are sick or unwell giving them supplies uh, providing help to a local sports club who was directly in youngsters who uh, of that club were directly involved in being volunteers to help people so uh, at least even who are housed in hostel facilities like the sai centers and all that i mean those are like i mean like a bubble in itself or like being but they they just don't mm-hmm. get disconnected with with what, what the reality is because they live in that world they know that they live in the world so it's 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 not about i mean it's it probably got to, got a lot to do with the kind of money that they earn perhaps it, it, there's, a, there's a lot to do with that perhaps because uh, they uh, and beyond that i think it's also i mean there is a i mean i'll just use a malayalam word there is a word called, world called a phrase which is valarthu dosham which is problem with the upbringing so i'm not talking about upbringing in a family sense i'm mm-hmm. talking about upbringing in the sporting system sense so an indian sports person right from the initial stage he or she grows up afraid of the system because he or she knows that their mm-hmm. fate is in the hands of the officials who sit there so the same applies to cricket and uh, the same applies to any sport so uh, when we talk about footballers speaking out and their enterprise the footballers are slight i mean i'm sure sudan can elaborate on that a lot also they are also independent of the system because uh, not every footballer has aspirations to be uh, ego stream matches certainly not the i league players that he was we asked at least at the time for the time being So, so, but they know that they can play. They know that they can make a living, and they also know that they have to go back to the society they are part of and make make a living there, be there, do something with them. So, so that kind of a belonging is there among footballers. That is there with with with, with wrestlers because they wrestle in the mud, and most of them come from from rural backgrounds and they understand where they come from. So, that gets disconnected when when you are too much part of the system of, I mean. drilling of the idea that you are our slaves that way your fate is in our hands and we will decide what to do mm-hmm. and it, it it's so ingrained in the system that even the a graders uh, someone like a virat kohli or something uh, someone would never go out of, uh, away from the system they are, they are they are there and cricket also as a 
handicap, which is something that I have, I have, I have understood through the course of my sporting career initially and a little bit during my journalistic career as well, that every sport has a, a psychology attached to it. And cricket is a highly individualistic pursuit. I know it's a team game. I know 11 players and all that. But everybody plays for their own record. It's a game of statistics. You, your team wins, but if you have scored a duck, maybe you won't make the, make the team the next day. So, despite how many runs you saved as a fielder. So, that selfishness gets imbibed into the system. So, I, I was when I was housed a little bit in Patiala, and I was I was closely close to a researcher who was doing a study on this, and he had made some uh, deductions based on his study on at least where he said tennis players tend to racket players tend to be selfish more than a volleyball player uh, because volleyball to score a point you need three people three touches <laughs> you need their help. Right? Uh, tennis player. Even when you're training, you are away on two sides of the net. And it's an individual. It's a very individual. Selfish in that sense, it's not a negative sense as far as sport is concerned, but it just builds on your psyche. That's what, that was his direction. Of course, it's psychology, so it, there's always gray area in all these things. So possibly something has crept into the cricketer's psyche also as far as selfishness is concerned. And also that idea that I mentioned about Indian sports persons generally being drilled in that in that follow follow the rule recording or follow the rule system that they that they that they are brought up with. So they they just don't they just don't stand up at all. And as far as BCCI is concerned, and this is this I was itching to talk about. We spoke, speak about IPL and its social responsibility, etc. BCCI being a cricket board, it it forsake or it it gave up or it turned its back towards its responsibility to the game when it changed that IPL in the UAE because it came at the price of the World Cup. And World Cup would have made a difference to a lot of smaller, I mean, T20 World Cup in Australia, I'm talking about, which will take place. It, could have, it would have made a difference to a lot of smaller countries whose chance it was to be there and play and get some uh, funding for that as well and get some experience for their players as well and also so that never happened they didn't look at the larger picture of of, of what what the game mm -hmm. needs they just looked at what indian cricket or the ipl needs so 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 you are talking you are expecting board or an entity to do justice to a social cause cause when it doesn't do justice to its own cause on game so Okay. I should have written this. Siddharth, yeah. I'll just that's, yeah. That's Siddharth, I'll just quickly say. Sorry, Shada, I was just going to say, you know, we we shouldn't go too huh. much on the cricket bashing sort of front because we have with us no, no. the finest fielder ever born, and we we don't want to anger <laughs> that person. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or we've all grown up playing and we love and we and we don't. Uh, the idea yeah. is not to take the pace for for like fun, but like what Leslie is no, no. very very pertinent. We we were in fact talking about this a couple of days ago in the context where where we are in football and where we are in cricket, right? The conversations that are happening about expanding uh, the scope of competitions mm. at an Asian mm. level or at a world level in football, where India is leading the thrust for more teams to play, right? That mm. the World Cup mm. or the Asian yes. Cup should have from 16 to 24. That the AFC Champions, yes. which is currently going on in Goa, should have 40 teams, including one from India. <laughs> All of that. We, and we are making the same argument that sports should be inclusive. It should expand and involve yes. people. Etc. Yes. But the BCCI, when it comes to like the last World Cup that was held, has the absolute opposite stance. Ki hamare, hum, it's not worth our time to play against these affiliate nations. Please. Yeah, Hamari yeah. Dukan. Hamari Dukan should be Hamari Dukan. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, a, it's a completely, it's, uh, uh, and, and it's, uh, uh, I just want to, uh, I of course completely agree with what you said. Leslie's thing about the, uh, this is about the psychology of a sport is also very interesting. Again, we could go on for two hours, Aram say about that. Um, 
so cricket's the sort of closing in in on itself is something that is being pushed almost relentlessly in conversation about you know this the ipl takes only two months it's too less you know and the whole thing is that it's uh, what happens in the ipl no indian team ever loses right that's the whole eventual happiness that is there about um and uh, uh, so it's almost like because you have money it, it's like they are trying to be the the european uh, super league uh, people that's the thing that it's a little close club let's keep it here let's only three countries play each other all the time and get the board that you know get bored up out of their pants um i just want to just before we go i just wanted to uh, i just found this out um that the icc has gives out these development awards which are given to smaller countries to encourage them to spread the sport and so on and they had one at this time it was a cause cricket for social good and so on and that and the and the global prize went to uh, the uganda cricket association the uganda cricket association during their covid last year from march to november they supported about 1500 people that are part of their ecosystem so it was their players they gave them their money they paid out whatever uh, they promised them it was all their school coaches it was all their cricket, what they call cricket teachers because these are very very it's just starting out in that sense they gave their money out to them as well as there is a neighborhood surrounding their main central sort of stadium i think in kampala if i'm not wrong and uh, they uh, uh, there Uh, they went out to the local community from where a lot of their players come from and gave them medicines gave them soap gave them food stuff so they were giving they were giving you know and to and their their annual budget is 1.1 million dollars that's it and um, th- for me to hear that story it was almost like i wanted to cry because i'm seeing just look at the opposite side what is going on uh the, the bcci has 6000 people i think that are on their payroll which includes players and and and, and officials and like staff whom they pay for like money i don't know whether they paid them for last season that's uh, the, we are now in the 2021 season is finishing i don't know whether the people that have been paid because they've not played games or not i don't know where where they got their checks i know that in state associations they've helped out and everything with all their malis and Uh, the scorers and umpires and so on, but I don't know whether this has happened at the national level when the money comes in the national. And Uganda is this other example. So you should just look at it. You know, it has to be near to your heart. It has to be in your heart to to want to give rather than just take, take, take. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, you know, so I'm going to end this just one last bit. Uh, again, uh, going back to uh, my little anecdotal survey that that is is more anecdotal than superb statistics. survey. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah a uh, uh, full disclaimer on on the sanctity of the <laughs> sanctity of the survey it is not it's just, <laughs> just an instagram post uh, but anyway the the responses nevertheless were interesting because people took the time and it, it's an indicator of how valuable cricket is uh, in in the lives of normal indian people because uh, you know artists have come out people who perhaps generally don't follow even sport have come out and voice their opinion on what's happening in cricket and and the IPL in particular um one of the things that that, that there's a joke going around there are lots of jokes going around the internet these days uh, because so many people have offered help so many nations have offered help to india in terms of technology in terms of other things to deal with the medical impact of 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 the pandemic and one of the lines was now if only new zealand were to send us a prime minister <laughs> The, the the we would be able to we would be more effective at dealing with uh, the the crisis <laughs> the pandemic <laughs> the point is that that the prime minister of new zealand uh, jacinda ardern is a woman and how this relates to my poll is that only men said that the ipl must go on unabated as it is today uh about one third of those who responded to the poll said yes it should continue two thirds said not uh, all of uh, the women who responded to this poll said no it should not uh, i'm bringing these two things together because simply the question is is there a very very strong case for uh, more women in leadership roles in not just cricket but sport in general you asking me or you asking leslie I, both of you can have a go i mean i doubt leslie it. go first leslie but but that that my dear leslie to say no uh, <laughs> come on leslie <laughs> <laughs> i i'm 
I'm not Yoshiro Mori, the Japanese <laughs> Olympic organizing committee, committee head who had to step down. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, from, from there I can start, in fact, because uh, it, took, it took a huge controversy and a huge campaign to make some changes in the, in the Tokyo Olympics organizing committee and uh, get more women participation. In fact, the chief is now, now a woman. And, uh, and we are talking about Olympic Games here. And uh, so, and recently there was elections at the uh, IOA uh, where again, I didn't see a single woman in that, uh, the, the council panel where the elections were held to. And uh, same thing applies across, I, I can give an example of my home district in Ernakulam in Kochi, where just day before there was an election for the basketball association, district basketball association, and that Kochi has, I think, around 12 to 15 college basketball teams, women's basketball teams, who are who are pretty decent teams, who could who could stand their own in any national level competition, and so that much that much of women players, girl play, girls are there who play the basketball and play basketball and. They only had one representation in the district association, one woman in the association. So that's a reality across all four, not just in India. I guess it's 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 right across the world, where representation of women is very less in 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 sports governing bodies and I mean clubs, you name it, any you name any sport, any club, and including sport where women are, I mean. Women participation is on par with men. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah fair enough. Like, with men. like the Olympics, so, I mean, one of the things in the charter in the movement is is the, exactly that, and and uh, we, it's it's super encouraging to see that we are at a stage where at least in terms of participation of athletes, we are almost at a 50-50 level, and hopefully soon there will be more women participating in and competing at the Olympic Games than men. Uh, so so th- there are some positives yeah. somewhere. But 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 uh, Shada, you know, beyond the the jokes and and all of that, uh, it does impact everyone because there is a very strong sort of culture of toxic masculinity, which leads us into these kind of situations where we are afraid to, uh, you know, show vulnerability to speak about issues of of uh, whether it's mental health. Or you know, and and I think a lot of athletes, men, male athletes, female athletes, all of them, both mm. kind of scenarios while they are playing sport. And from that perspective, how can changing this environment in terms of the administration and the running of sport, how, how can it be done, and what sort of benefits do you see it having? Definitely close. Uh, I think the yeah, <laughs> I think the I think the uh, the what you're saying is of course that it's important to have women uh, in 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 those sort of positions uh, because uh, you know people will say oh uh, all administrative bosses are the same but they're not the same and it would be interesting uh, to see their responses to situations and I think the reason why women are so there's a pushback against women is because men don't really want to men in power, positions of power. I'm going to say again, not all men. Um, they don't want to hear another worldview because a woman's worldview is different from a man's worldview. They don't want to hear that uh, worldview to change the sort of narrative that they're going around with. A uh, very interesting story is that I, uh, at the Sai Center in Kengeri, um, it was said, I, it, I could be absolutely wrong, Again, as you see, as women, we always sort of try and uh, second guess ourselves, put it out there. And we may be making a mistake, but... Um, I'd gone there last time to do a story on the women's hockey team. This is now a lot time ago. And uh, I found out that the psychologist that was there, she had no problem working with the women. The men just didn't want to talk. You know, the, men, men, the men's hockey team had no psychologist. As in there wasn't one on call, basically, in yeah. that sense. So this question of, of what you're saying about vulnerability or anxiety or whatever, to just have that uh, dialogue and discussion, you know, and uh, look at the state in which Indian uh, Indian men's cricket. I always say that uh, Indian women's cricket is in a worse position than any other women's sport in the country because every other women's sport in the country is 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 ordered by the Olympic Charter to play the same number of events, to go for training, to go for camp, water, water. It's a complete talking. Um, that when there was a question, when there was a chance to to sort of uh, we know what happened to the Loda reforms and they just collapsed into this slag heap that they've become. 
when there was a chance when they wanted an indian a, a, a cricketer to come no male indian cricketer said okay i'll come and be part of the panel to see how these recommendations for reform are pushed through uh, only diana adelj turned up you know and then we know what happened uh, after that so the point is they don't want to hear it's almost like they don't hear another view so now all the women who said that we don't think the ipl should go ahead uh, was that was your question wasn't it or uh, it was not being um yeah yeah, held in, you know, yeah. who didn't want yeah, to go yeah. ahead they would be shout yeah they they would be shouted shouted down at home they would be shouted down in a public place by all these things and just as we are talking uh, varun grover has put out a tweet saying that uh, saying that uh, the ipl is um talking about uh, you know the thing about it being that cricket is a distraction uh, yeah saying that cricket is as much a distraction as a person telling a joke at a funeral then someone has tried to amend that and say no cricket is as much as of a distraction as a person telling a joke to a person in queue for a funeral you know so try but that is that, that is what we have uh, 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 come to so they be shouted down so the the question of them being heard and and we said listen you can't do this is i i don't know how many women are there in the production team for example in the broadcast team i know that there are very few women in the bcci office there would be i don't know maybe about 5 or 10 or something like that in in a large office that there is i don't know how much of a voice they have what their seniority is maybe th- that conversation would have been different had it been a professionally run setup you'd be able to have those conversations the icc has its uh media uh, media people that are women they had a very senior woman uh, woman uh, executive uh, until very recently um in media rights and broadcasting arthi singh dabas uh, she was there so uh, you know it's 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 a very obvious uh, thing that you need women in in senior just to have a different point of view just to say that what you are saying is nonsense you know to be able to tell the guys that what you are talking is rubbish you know Uh, it should be this it should be that that that's okay. to have an opposing view rather than this sort of cattle herd of of people saying it's an entertainment business it's an employment generation is whatever you know that kind of thing uh, and opposing view with a mandate to be taken seriously so that probably reservation 50 50 reservation would 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 help maybe or yes. maybe yes position you need women at the helm not at not as a committee member i mean and also yeah. enough numbers so that so that you have you can't be shot down like you mentioned yeah so that's, yeah. that's also that's a, that's a problem right so you have you have had a woman for instance hockey they had a woman for the longest time as 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 uh, 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 sec- secretary right and uh, uh, and again i mean of course the ceo of hockey india is also a woman but but again the the power to take calls lie in lie with mr batra so it's always be so, <laughs> so how much of what another two hour conversation coming up <laughs> <laughs> no i'm going to i'm going to that one you want to bring hockey i i i'd be very happy it's a, it's a, many more conversations such conversations with you guys uh, it's been i think uh, insightful for me uh, thank you for allowing me to or giving me your time uh, to host this little conversation uh, prabir as well who left a little while ago uh, sharda lesley thank you very much i i, I think in thanks you, you have outlined in a very kind of non uh, non dogmatic non uh, shouty way uh, all of you uh, what our perspective is on on this subject and and why we are talking about it and you know uh, something that that like has really stuck with me over the last couple of days of of just trying to figure out what's happening in cricket is a a, a joint secretary of the bdca which is the 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 body that controls uh, or runs cricket uh, the body which is now supposedly helping out in the organization of the delhi leg of the indian premier league so so someone is quoted as saying you know in these lockdown situations hamara kaam aur aasan ho jayega like it will be easier for us to conduct <laughs> this tournament in a lockdown i mean if that is not a slap on the face of anyone or everyone that loves this sport or watches yeah. this sport uh, and feels for cricket in in the way that you guys clearly do um, i don't know what is and i'm going to leave leave it at that uh, let you make of it uh, as viewers whatever you will uh 
irrespective the tournament is on and we'll continue we hope that some of these voices reach those in power so that they can even now uh, it's never too late as a country we are responding to this crisis in a very uh, late manner in any case so it's not too late for the bcci and the ipl to redeem itself for some of the players to take a stand and say okay enough uh, it's time now to use our platforms for something a little more than just our very narrow self serving money making perspectives thank you very much once again guys thank you everyone to for who's watching this uh, you can check this out and read all of our other coverage of sport uh, on www.newsclick.in like subscribe and all of that uh, but most importantly as of now stay safe uh, stay at home as much as you can wear your masks wash your hands do all of the things that people are telling you to because there's no other way out of it except by doing the things that that we need to do uh, thank you all for watching thank you guys again for your time goodbye